Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church of Madison, Wisconsin. I am amazed at how many of you braved the cold and the uh, not perfect road conditions today. Um, thank you for doing that. Uh, did anybody have any trouble? Anybody get stuck? No? Good. I'm so glad. I'm glad you all got here safely, and please be safe also on your way back home, and if you're venturing out for anything else today. And I also want to welcome those of you who are joining us on the live stream from the comfort and warmth of your homes. Welcome to you as well. Um, and a particular welcome to anybody who is joining us for the first time. Welcome to our visitors. If you are here for the first time with us in person, uh, one of our deacons will get you a, a small token of thanks for joining us today, a welcome gift, a little gift bag. If you are joining us for the first time online on the live stream, there is a button at the top of your screen that says new here. If you wouldn't mind clicking on that and just giving us a little bit of information about yourself so that we can be in contact with you, we would love to be able to do that. As we worship today, we're going to keep things informal. So I'm going to invite you to move around and use your whole bodies for worship, to sit and stand when you wish, to light a candle uh, over here if that is meaningful to you at any point in the service. If you want to dance or if there's something else that you'd like to do that I'm just not thinking of, I invite you to do that if it enhances your worship experience. And so, as we begin worship today, I invite you to take whatever posture in this very moment is meaningful to you during our call to worship and invocation and our passing of the peace. I'm going to lead us by reading the words that appear in your bulletin or on your screen in the light font, and I'm going to invite you to respond with the words that are printed in bold. Speak to us, Holy One, for your servants are listening. The one who fashioned us in our mother's womb calls us this day. Lead us, O God, and we will follow. The one acquainted with all our ways leads us into life. Bless us, spirit of wisdom and truth, and guide us home. The one who hems us in from behind and before is a lamp to our feet. Speak to us, for your servants are listening. Let us pray. Before you formed us in our mother's womb, you knew us completely. Before a word is on our lips, you perceive it. You hem us in before and behind. You call us as your own and lay your hand upon us. Such knowledge is too wonderful for us it is so high we cannot attain it. Even when we fail, Holy One, call us anew, that we might hear your voice and respond with expectation and joy. Here I am. Amen. The peace of Christ be with each and every one of you. And I invite you now to greet one another with a sign of peace. And if you're joining us online, I invite you to use the chat to greet one another.
I'm going to ask for you to join me today in our prayers of the people. If at any point, again, during this prayer or any other time in the service, you wish to light a candle, uh, there are, of course, some folks that are printed that are in our church family um, and in our community and beyond, printed in your, in your bulletin. Uh, I do invite you to light a candle if that's meaningful for you. Uh, I will say also just uh, one word. Um, you'll see in our church family, under our church family, the Adams family uh, and friends are listed. And if you have not heard, uh, Bert Adams passed last week. Uh, and so we want to remember uh, Diane and we want to remember uh, the Adams family and, and all of their friends. And uh, that obituary should be going out a little bit later today to everybody with some information about an upcoming memorial service. As we pray, uh, as I asked before, for just your participation in this, there will be a few moments in the prayer when you will hear me say the words, help us to love one another in this way. And I'll ask you to respond with, oh God, hear our prayer. Let us pray together. You love us, O oh God, from the moment of our conception. You know us and you love us from the womb. You love us and you call us from before the moment of our first breath. And you love us when we first see the light of day. As a parent loves their child before they ever see it and then embraces it gently from the moment of its birth, so you love us and we thank you. Help us to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. You love us, O oh God, from the time of our naming. You love us in our growing and hold us as we take our first steps. You love us and walk beside us as we explore the world with eager hands and eyes. As a parent loves their child as they see it grow and develop, so you love us and we thank you. Help us to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. You love us, O oh God, as we mature and seek our way. You love us as we become aware of the world around us. You love us as we smile and play. You even love us when we say no and when we begin to stray. As a parent loves their child, as they see it become proud and tall, so you love us even when we stumble and fall. Help us to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for loving us when we are unloving, for caring for us when we are uncaring, and for calling to us when we go far away. Help us to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. God, hear our prayers of love this day for those around us, for those we have held before you in our time of sharing, for those we have thought of in our moments of caring. Help us to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. We pray in your most holy name. Amen. This is a reading from Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. This is God's word. May we be blessed with understanding. So I have to say that some of my fondest memories growing up uh, was in school going on field trips. Anybody remember field trips fondly? Yes? Of course, uh, growing up in Pennsylvania, many of the trips that we took were to these kind of historic early American settlements that you find throughout the Northeast where people would dress in these period costumes and they would act out certain uh, daily tasks. We could tour homes and stables and shops that were made to look like they did hundreds of years ago. And I never, uh, have to be honest, I never did much care for those particular trips. And as I grew older, it became more evident to me that 
the history that was shared in these places was very sanitized, very whitewashed. It wasn't a full expression of our nation's history. But I will say there was one thing that I always found intriguing on these trips, and those were the demonstrations. I was often curious about how things were done or made before modern technology. Things like churning butter. You've seen that, right? By hand. I think, and perhaps the most intriguing thing, was watching weaving on a loom. I remember on one trip being just mesmerized by this weaving process. How methodical it was. How intricate the patterns could be. The fibers were so carefully and deliberately woven together. The finished product was so carefully, so intentionally crafted. You could even say lovingly put together. As I was preparing for the sermon today, I actually watched a few YouTube videos of weaving. And all of those memories came back to me. And if you have a moment, maybe later today or sometime this week, I would invite you to go back and watch that process of weaving because it is really fascinating. And it illustrates, I think, so well what today's scripture lesson is getting at. Last week, we were reminded of our belovedness, that each one of us is beloved by God. And today, we're reminded of that again in this psalm, in this song of praise, this song that celebrates human creation. So beloved are we that God has created each of us with such care, such intentionality, so much so that God knows everything about us. Did you hear that in the scripture reading? Scripture told us that God knows when we sit and when we rise. God knows our thoughts from far away. God is acquainted with all of our ways. And according to the song of praise, God even knows us better than we know ourselves. Knowing what we are about to say before the words are ever on our tongues. This is a psalm that speaks about intimate connection. The unconditional love God has for each and every one of us. And it also speaks to the loving care that God has taken to create us in the divine image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, just as we are. We are knit together in the womb. Janet, in your reading, did you use the word knit or woven? Do you remember? Ah, okay, can't recall. That's okay. There are, it's different in different translations. Usually it's knit, and I think in our, in our new Revised Standard Version, even in the updated uh, edition, um, it is translated as knit, but that same Hebrew word also can be translated as woven, and there are a few other possible translations that I'll get to in a little bit. So when I think of that process of weaving and the intentionality of that, I think of the scripture, how we are woven together so intentionally, so deliberately, so carefully, so lovingly. In her commentary on this particular passage, the Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney writes, let there be sound, that's not what she writes, that's what I say. In her commentary on the passage, um, the Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney writes, the psalmist contemplates their creation as an act of weaving. When read with other scriptures, other Hebrew scriptures, the psalmist 
in the fullness of their gender is handcrafted by God in the womb. I love Dr. Gaffney's use of the word handcrafted, and in fact, in her translation, that is what she translates that word to, not knit or woven, but handcrafted. And okay. this further, this that it's not just the fullness in fullness of your gender. She celebrates the unique fullness of God's personhood in general, and the extension celebrates ours as well. In other words, God has handcrafted each and every one of us carefully, intentionally, lovingly, just the way that we are. In recent years, this has been widely used for members of the U.S. Committee. In fact, you remember you go to your participants in festival, and you ask for some applications that you handed out to me because it is that. And that little room was hard, it was raining, and it was hard to hang And notice that there are various versions of this passage that simply affirmation. We're fearfully, wonderfully made, we're made of God as you are. Intentionally, literally, lovingly created. So, for instance, the text is told. First, each one of us is intimately known and loved by God. And for the is who fill it. I have to remind you that each one of us is intimately known and loved by God. The second is this. No matter our race, our skin color, or no matter our gender, gender, or sexuality, no matter ability, our personality, or each and every one of us is created in the divine image, and lovingly, and intimately, and crafted by God. No questions, fullness of person being, questions the design of God. Rejection of any person to the art is rejection of God. So when we, of course, obey the other doctor, the painter, and spirit from his wings, there's one thing of meanings that communicates what the loveness of each and every person. And so the angels get whole and holy, just the way we are. In this head, we are woven together, we are handcrafted by God. And then he put that idea, concept, belief, even as effort. In St. James Christ's theorem, just where he's asked to Jesus. We are all caught in this network mutuality, tied into sequence of destiny. Whether it affects one directly, affects all. Whether it affects one directly, affects all directly, we are made together because of the structure of reality. During the vocal language of weaving in this room, just like how we've had the lives are. Destiny is woven into a synchronous. We read this passage. Every time we read the psalm, I want us to be reminded of our own love in this passage. I just want us to be reminded that everybody else around is also be loved. Now, why is we motivated always to act in the interest of love of God, love of neighbor, and love of self? Because I think recognizing our interest in the interest of our community is what it means to be able to build beloved community. Which is the phrase that was explained in the early 20th century, last bit of sideways, it was expanded upon decade after King. For Dr. Nilby, because of this lofty goal that is unachievable, he makes the realistic vision of global equity that can achieve a great mass of people good enough to be the practice among us. Poverty, homelessness, hunger, no community that would want to exist. Racism, other forms of discrimination, would replace ice spirit together in solution. The way I understand that, I believe Dr. King's going to be rude in scripture, of course, but think of this in the psalm. Because we recognize the love of every person. And also acknowledge that we as individual people, also as a community, are made to have together. Kind of this big, beautiful tessery. Just as we're individually happy about God, we are called to be the kind of community that we want to see. A community of age, knit better, intentionality, with care, with love. And that is our call. That is what we are called to, to build a love community. No, just the size of that I'm saying, I know if you have last verse, I want to read the empty stuff, rest of your earth, building new life, now and yet to finding all your back creation in the living tapestry. You've called us to weavers, we'll do love all we do, we will a piece of pattern, we will weave our world in it. So in case you ever wonder if you ran with him, you do pity with intentionality. I was happy for, I think this time, I'm going to be able to be a false artist. That process will have to include engaging our engaging our conversations, exploring together with them, what it means, the beauty and what we want to do that can be told. Deep to see, what the needs of our neighbors are engaging. That is the work of building the beloved community. And one way we're going to take that is I'll write up as both the literary work, you know, we're going to be hosting a series of series, where you leave all the agents work of the beloved unity, and that's how they're going to share their personal experience. They're going to come to share a little expertise and a little bit of how that connects to faith values. How are they beloved unity? And we just see the beloved unity of seekers who will intentionally separate us from indigenous to color folks, leaders, various community members, to each one of them share their deeper experiences. I hope that you'll be able to have some conversations with these speakers and ask them questions. And we might get a better idea of the needs around you. Perhaps you can find out that the work you're already doing does not hit the mark. Some of our speakers will count the way you might expect to step up in the way they might have endured. But each week, each month, these are we will learn a little bit more about beloved unity from the perspective of others. Don't join us here. Join us in the worship service here. We'll be doing things like the Asian community and talking a lot of people. That's the important work that we're called to do. As we enter this offering up, would we just consider how do you contribute to that community? Through your actions, service, perhaps giving? Because there are many reasons we need to do this before. So I ask you during this time, consider how you contribute your resources of money, of confidentiality, of expertise to the work of Build the Community.
please pray with me. Ruler of history, in every age you have sent men and women who poured out their lives as a witness to your love and truth. You know us so well, our creator, our skills, our aspirations, our weakness, our fears. We pray for the courage that we will need, for we commit our lives to you. Amen. A couple of words as the choir is making their way up to the front here. Um, Following our service, of course, we hope that you'll join us for a time of fellowship, some light refreshments uh, out these doors if you're here with us in person. There is a fellowship time online as well on Zoom. If you just hit that uh, Zoom room button at the top of your screen, if you're on our live stream, um, all are welcome to join there. Uh, I've been asked also to invite you, so you'll notice uh, in a moment, the, the choir will, uh, during our benediction, our sung benediction, the song Weave, we're gonna sing through it three times. And you're going to, you know, I'm just gonna let you watch and see what happens. Uh, and if you are interested in uh, learning about what the choir is engaging in, and I'm not gonna give it away, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a surprise, then I would invite you after the service to come up and uh, there's a little tutorial and you can, uh, you can play with the, the, the ribbons. And um, anyway, you'll see, it'll make, this will make way more sense when you see it in just a moment. And I will then just lastly invite you, uh, as we sing the song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, it is, it is uh, also known as the Black National Anthem, and it is traditional to stand during this song. So this will be the one time when I will ask you, as you are able, to please rise. 